Coming up on this episode, we're going to be talking about subscriptions and how they can be a great way for you to connect with your favorite authors. Welcome to episode 445 of the Big Gay Fiction Podcast, the show for avid readers and passionate fans of queer romance fiction. I'm Jeff, and with me as always is my co-host and husband, Will. Hey there, Rainbow Romance Reader. It's great to have you back for another episode of the show. Before we get into our interview and talking about subscription, I have to tell you about Timothy Janowski's latest, which is actually the first book from Harlequin's new Afterglow imprint. Now, Timothy gave us a little tease about this back in episode 434, and I instantly knew I'd have to read it because you've got fake dating between game show contestants. And fake dating and game show comes right through in the title of this book, which is called The Fake, and fake is in parentheses, dating game. Now in the fake dating game, we meet Holden James, who has recently lost his mom, and he's still working through that grief. And he's also had a breakup with his boyfriend of a number of years. All of this, though, doesn't deter him from taking a trip to Los Angeles because he's going to audition for the game show Madcap Market, which is Timothy's fictionalization of the classic game show Supermarket Sweep. Holden's got to find somebody to audition with him, though. Initially, he reaches out to somebody living in L.A. who is a friend of his boyfriend, who he believed was also more of a friend to him than maybe they actually were. When he's turned down there, it comes back to the concierge that he'd met earlier when he arrived at the hotel that he's staying at. Holden and Leo have the best meet-cute, as there's this whole exchange when Holden is trying to book a restaurant to actually go meet that friend at. The sparks and the chemistry are already happening before they ever hatch the fake dating scenario that they end up in. And why the fake dating for the game show? Well, you see, Madcap Market only auditions people who are already in some form of relationship. It could be mother-daughter, brothers, a romantic relationship, whatever it is, there's got to be a relationship there. And this is all very important to Holden because he was going to do this with his mom. It was always a goal of theirs to be on the show. They watched the show together when he was a kid. And now he feels like he's keeping a promise to his mom to come out and be on the show. So he needs Leo for that. The chemistry that Timothy gives us between Holden and Leo is absolute gold. These two are so tuned into each other. Even in the early days, they're like really paying attention and listening to the other one. It's all under the guise of getting their backstories down so that they know what they need to say when they're on the show, but it's a lot more than that. They actually listen to each other about the problems that they're having. While they're not giving their entire history to each other, they're giving enough where there is obviously the care that starts to form. That As they keep seeing each other, they both realize that if this was a slightly other scenario, that maybe they really could be something, but, you know, they're just supposed to be dating for the game show, and eventually Holden is supposed to go back to the East Coast and go home. And of course, they both know that they're carrying a lot of baggage, and this may not be the best time for a relationship. And as they're kind of navigating through their whole fake dating thing, they do start sleeping together and really having some sizzling, hot, sexy times. Timothy really turns up the spice level here to a just dizzyingly awesome degree. And I really like how Timothy builds the story and how in almost a true Hallmark movie fashion, that the person who was broken up with comes back into the story later. It really throws Holden off that this happens, and it really sets up an interesting final act of the book that I'm not going to spoil at all. I will simply say that I thought Timothy really brought everything together so well, and I was so just blown away by the transformation that Holden has on the other side of the events that happened in L.A., It just helps submit how much of a fan that I am of Timothy Janofsky's with how this story capped off and how Holden and Leo grabbed onto their HEA. So, so good. I continue to just be excited for whatever Timothy's going to bring out next. I do highly recommend that you pick up The Fake Dating Game by Timothy Janofsky. Okay, now let's get into some talk about subscriptions. This is actually something we're going to discuss for a couple of episodes because While it isn't a new concept for an author to have a subscription available on Patreon, Ko-Fi, or some other platform, it has certainly exploded in the gay romance space over the past year. Subscriptions are now becoming commonplace alongside authors selling books directly to readers from their websites, 
and doing Kickstarter campaigns to launch books and other special editions. In fact, it seems not even a week goes by anymore where there isn't an announcement about authors starting a subscription. And in fact, I'm one of those authors actually making an announcement because as this episode drops, I'm launching a subscription on Ream where I'll be sharing chapters from works in progress and where people who are reading those works in progress can actually get the final books before they go on sale. Plus, my entire backlist is going to be available to read there too, including a couple of exclusive stories that aren't available anywhere else. In addition, I'll be offering a discount for anything that you might buy directly from my store too. So I'm launching with a work in progress that is a second chance romance between a hockey player and a ballet dancer. This was actually a story that I had in an anthology a couple of years ago, and I've been working on expanding from the anthology because the story really needed some more room to breathe. I'm really looking forward to sharing this. If you want to check out the first couple of chapters for this story, you can also follow me on Ream, where the first couple of chapters are available for free. You can find that at reamstories.com slash Jeff Adams. And in addition to the stories that I'll share there, I'm also going to be posting about how the writing is going, what I'm reading, what might be coming up on my writing calendar, and whatever else I'm inspired to do. This will become my community. I've never had a Facebook group as an author, but I'm excited to build the community on Ream, where everyone who is there is into books, into reading, and it's all happening without any of the distraction of the millions of other things that there are to do on sites like Facebook. I hope you'll have a look and follow along as I create some new stuff this year. And again, you can find all of this at reamstories.com slash Jeff Adams, or you can get the link that I'll leave in the show notes. Now, you might be asking yourself what Ream is. They're a newcomer to the subscription scene, having launched in mid-2023. And what makes them really awesome is that it's a platform that's built by authors to have features that would be great for authors and readers. We've been watching them grow and are really excited by what the team is doing there to make a great place for authors and readers to make online communities, and talk about books. And since we know that Ream and perhaps the idea of subscribing to an author might be new to you, we ask author and co-founder Michael Evans to come talk to us about how Ream was created and the features that it has that makes it a good place for both authors and readers to be. Michael also shares what's planned for Ream in 2024, and there is some really cool stuff there that's going to be coming out with some new and exciting features. We also discuss why readers might consider subscribing to their favorite authors and the cool things that he's seeing authors offer. Michael, welcome to Big Gay Fiction Podcast. I'm so excited to have you here to talk about subscriptions. I'm so excited to be here. You're amazing, Jeff. Love your podcast. Love everything you're doing. Just grateful to talk with you all. Yeah, and feel the same about you. We're really big fans here of the platform that Reem's become. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to have you here was to introduce our listeners to Reem because it is a new player out there in the subscription space. To kind of kick us off, tell the listeners who you are because I suspect you're going to be new for most of them. This is actually a really cool moment because I'm a science fiction author and now for the last like six years have been indie publishing. On the reader end of things, it's like you don't always know how authors are publishing. But when you know you're when you're when you jump onto the author side, you're like, oh wow, there's a pretty big world of difference between being a trad author and an indie author. And I've always been on the indie side of things and have loved it. It all started from me being obsessed actually with like Divergent Hunger Games, those two specific series I just like fell in love with and needed to start writing, writing myself. And you know, now from, I'm very passionate about community building, always have been, and saw that being an author, you know, on specifically, I was in Kindle Limited, writing mainly on Amazon. And there was a lot of limitations for that platform, both in terms of, for me, self as an author, but also in what I could provide my readers. I wanted to be able to actually be able to interact with my readers, to be able to get their feedback on my stories, and to be able to have a close relationship with my CUNY. On Amazon, I didn't even know who my readers were. I had no way of contacting them. I didn't know. And what I ended up figuring out is that my readership was like much older than I thought, which was actually a beautiful thing. But I would have loved to like know that and not have it figured out after like years of like stumbling. You know, I thought my audience was like mostly people like like me, like middle school kids, high school kids reading dystopian fiction, but it ended up being mostly 
adults who were in their 40s, some actually in their 60s and 70s. And they were reading my books and connecting with me like over emails when I finally started to get that insight to my audience. But I was like, wow, what if I was able to like actually have that, again, that closer relationship, breaking down the barriers between author and reader. And yeah, from there, I actually did YouTube for a while, which is pretty funny. And then I got into live streaming. You know, people say, we all have different hobbies. So I don't know how much people have like gone on platforms like Twitch and maybe watch gaming streams there. But I actually was a, a live stream creator in the sense of I would like do scavenger hunt and manhunts in different cities, like really interesting way to be creating online. But I guess bottom line, I've always told stories, I've always created. And that experience really showed me like the power of like connecting with an audience of like building a relationship with my fans. And I loved it. I got hooked on it. But then I went back to writing and realized how difficult it was. I was writing my next you know, little dystopian book, getting ready to publish. And I just felt really disenchanted with the options in front of me. And that's when I met Amelia, Mia Rose, who is one of the co-founders of Rain with me. She is an amazing senior romance author. And when we met, I was like, wow, you're doing something special. She was having an audience where she was able to basically create this VIP fan club for her readers. They were able to get early access to her books before they were published elsewhere. They were getting things like art that was like beautiful, really interesting art. There was even the ability for readers to get book boxes, swag and things of this nature. And I'm like, you've created like a mini Disney for your readers. And like, that is so cool. I didn't even know that was possible. And I've always been fascinated by the creator economy and the possibilities that creators have online to be able to create just immersive experiences for readers all over the world. And I finally met someone who was doing this. And when we chatted, I realized that it was really difficult and that it, we could make it and help it be a lot easier for her and her readers because a lot of the existing tools and platforms that you do use to connect with creative people online aren't actually really designed for reading. They're not designed for readers. And we were like, well, what if we actually did that and created a space that authors can build basically a, a VIP reader club and offer any experience that they want to their readers, whether it's you know early access to their books, whether it's behind the scenes content, whether it's you know bonus novellas or even things like signed books and merchandise. How can authors do this in one place that is you know easy to use for them, but also easy and fun to use for readers? And that's where you know we created Ream and we added a lot of fun things to the platform that you know we wish were possible other places like. You can comment on the paragraphs in Ream. So it's like that social aspect where reading becomes a multiplayer experience. Authors are able to make separate CUNY posts to update you on how their books are progressing, on the new stories that they're releasing. And I even see people do things like polls where like you can start to vote on the names for characters and vote on different locations and settings. It's amazing. And ultimately it's all about the relationship between an author and their readers and the incredible things that come from that. So that's kind of like the arc of like what's happened. Like I lived this journey of being an author and a reader and saw an opportunity to create something that could be like a better and more fun experience and have been lucky enough to meet a group of people that wanted to do it with me. And now that group of people is not just, you know, me and my co-founders working alone in a room, but like, you know, thousands of authors, tens of thousands of incredible readers who are, you know, on the platform and, supporting authors and it's just been the coolest experience and a dream come true. So that's a little bit about the full background of how I got to where I am today. And it's, it's weird. It's cool. It's like, I didn't expect this in my life, but I've always been the one to follow my passion and to, you know, want to just see where that takes me. And I hope we can help others do that too. We should say that you mentioned when you were talking about the writing that you were doing, that you thought it was only for people who were like you, middle school teenagers. You left out the fact that you started writing as a teenager, publishing as a teenager, and that now you've, you know, launched Ream with your co-founders and you're still in college. You're a very young entrepreneur who's done all this while, you know, going to school at the same time. Yeah. You know, it's, I'll say something about reading. That's pretty interesting. Like I think that I credit like most of how I've learned, like to, you know, again, start a company, do all these, start 
you know, publishing stories to like reading books, whether it was fiction or, you know, nonfiction. Like I've always been a voracious reader. I read about one to two books a week and that's what kind of, I learn a lot. And then from there, I'm like, oh, that's a crazy idea. Maybe it can, maybe I can actually do it. And, you know, the first, those ideas were like, maybe I could write stories. Maybe that's possible and surprise myself when I figured out I can write something that was half decent. But then, you know, now, you know, surprise myself again, when you keep experiencing and learning more and you're like, wow, there's, yeah, there's so many cool things that this world has to offer. And it feels like all of it's on like the other side of a story. Hence, storytellers rule the world. For people who are watching yes. the video, they see your t-shirt. <laughs> That's uh, true, yes. And it is like one of your driving forces and philosophies, I think, is storytellers rule the world. Yeah, 100%. 100%. We've seen, you know, subscriptions becoming more and more of a thing. From a reader standpoint, you know, they think about Kindle Unlimited. There, That's a type of subscription right there. We all, you know, subscribe to our streaming services. And, you know, listeners to this podcast have the option to subscribe to our Patreon to get some bonus materials and help yeah. us, you know, be able to transcribe episodes, for example. What is it about this that has caught on so much inside the reader community suddenly? Because even like the week that we're talking in middle December, like M.A. Wardell and Gregory Ash, who are authors who I am big fans of, have launched subscriptions. The week this comes out, I'm going to be launching my own subscription. Like, what's made this the minute for subscriptions to start delivering new and different things to readers more than we've seen in the past? Yeah, it's an amazing question. I think there's probably two two big factors. I think the first is that, you know, after COVID, we've seen the world change a lot. And before COVID, I think the place that stories and online storytellers had in our life was much different than it is now. You know, before COVID, a lot of us were adjusting to this digital world, but a lot of social institutions that exist, whether it was the community that we'd have at our work for people who were, you know, traveling to work, working in person, whether it was community that we had with like friendships and family, a lot of that got broken down in the two years of the pandemic. And a lot of it actually hasn't come back, whether it's working in the office, whether it's, you know, people moving different places and lives shifting. And all of a sudden, you know, we've seen us just spending more and more time in this digital world. And it's kind of, you know, not always the best thing. I think what we've seen a lot of times is that our mental health can be affected when we're spending all the time online, that it can feel very lonely for people of all different ages, it can feel very lonely. And we've actually seen the rise in whether it's anxiety, depression, and especially loneliness increase exponentially over the last several years to the point that it's it's really like one of the biggest problems, period, that we have as a society. And it's really sad. It's thing I felt personally. I mean, most of my friends are online. I go to college. I'm surrounded by people all day. But when I'm in the lunchroom, most people are looking down at their phones. Most people are not talking to other people. It's like strangely difficult to meet strangers when living in a city nowadays. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that way. So we're like all like a prisoner to these technologies in a way. And I think part of why we're seeing individual creators start memberships, start these VIP experiences for the readers and readers actually want to participate and want to be a part of it is because it allows us to break free and from you know this endless algorithm, from this endless scroll of stories and be a part of something, be a part of a community, be a part of supporting someone that we care about, be a part of experiencing something that isn't just you know the experience everyone else gets, something special. And whether that's early access to stories or bonus content, whatever it is. And it's really awesome to feel special. And it's really awesome to actually be treated like you're special. And we're so often just treated like another number, another reader, another this, and all the things that we do, it can very easily feel like the world has objectified us. And, you know, part of being a part of a community, part of being part of a membership is actually, you know, having that space to not only say, this is what I care about, and I'm going to show the world that, but also be cared for in return and get that, that 
you know, extra VIP experience, what we like to say is readers first. And I think the second thing comes down to actually, you know, in terms of when we talk about readers actually paying to subscribe to authors, paying, you know, monthly in these memberships, it is, you know, interesting because there are reader subscription programs already. You're right, like Kindle Unlimited. And the biggest difference is, you know, if you're going to subscribe to the Kindle Unlimited, you get access to unlimited books, but you're not actually like getting access to any one thing in specific. Like it's just all these books you have to sift through, find the stories you like. And, you know, with something like an author's subscription that's specific to them, if you're a fan of an author, if you really like their work, one, a lot of times it can be actually cheaper than going out and supporting that author outright. Like if an author has their backlist available at $10 a month, you can start to binge that author's work. And that would be much cheaper than if they're you're buying it a la carte in a retailer. Or a lot of people who are reading on serial apps, a lot of people on Ream, and they're publishing, you know, chat by chapter on the serial apps books can be really expensive. And oftentimes authors price themselves much more reasonably on, on a platform like Green. And the other big thing is that we're more aware, right? Like, and we're paying $5 a month to a creator that we care about, to an author and, and, you know, getting access to their books before they come out, getting access to all these amazing things. And that's a great experience. We also understand that we're directly supporting them. And when we go to a place like Amazon, when we go to these other retailers where we're not able to support the authors we love directly. Oftentimes, you know, it's a little disheartening to see that like, oh, I really love this author, but, and I want them to be able to, you know, like I, when I'm paying this book, I want them to get the money. But when there's all these middlemen taking away that share, it makes it more difficult. But I mean, that's why our motto storytellers of the world and, you know, really trying to decrease the barriers between readers and authors, both from a community level which I just talked about why that's something I think more people are doing, but also from like a, you know, an economic standpoint, like knowing that your money is going to support your authors in a higher degree is I think a thing to feel really good about. And I think, you know, those are two reasons we've seen it grow. And, you know, I don't think we're going to be in a future, even as someone who like runs a platform and runs a community that's trying to help authors and readers be able to benefit from memberships and benefit from, you know, having this monthly access to creative works. You know, I don't think we're going to live in a world where you're subscribing to every author that you read, or at least paying at the same time. I think we're going to live in a world where it's in a world of and. We're still going to be able to buy our books. These models will still exist, but there's also a world in which it becomes more and more popular for the creative people that we do really want to support, that we do want that behind the scenes access to, that we do want to get their books early, that we do want access to their backlist, whatever it is, that this becomes a better way to support and a better way to engage with the stories you love. So I think it's a, it's definitely not like everything's going to shift to this. It's a world of and, and it's growing. And I think we see the and a lot in just creative stuff overall. Yeah. I have the option to buy the basic book or the basic CD record album download, whatever we want to call music these days. <laughs> but then I can also get the special edition that's got bonus tracks or the fancy cover or, you know, the special edition that's at Barnes and Noble today, or then this seems to like feed into that. So when you're really into a particular author, you can get more, but you can also choose to just get the book that's at Amazon, if that's your preference. Yeah, no. And I think what we're also seeing now more and more too is, you know, on a platform like Ream, it's not like you can only pay a monthly to subscribe to authors. You know, most readers actually are following authors that they enjoy and authors are publishing work to them as a follower for free that, you know, they might get some of the chapters early. They might be able to get some of the behind the scenes access. Now, maybe not all of it. And that makes sense because, you know, we want to support our authors and it's a great thing. But it's a world in which you can still get a lot of these things, try things out, discover new authors. And that's something that now, you know, Ream, when this goes out, will have live is, you know, the ability to actually discover new authors on Ream, to follow them, to get into their stories. And you don't have to pay for that. You can just check it out. And then when you know that you really like an author and you know that you want more, then of course, you know, it will help the author a lot to 
to be able to upgrade and to be able to be a part of that and to get all that access. And then you get all the amazing things inside, but you don't have to do that unless you really want to. And you'll know that because you can follow an author for free and still get some awesome things too. So it's a definitely a world of and in multiple ways because you can still support authors, still be involved in their communities, still experience all these amazing things we're talking about, you know, even for free. The free concept is something that fascinates me too. The idea that you can follow because Reem's got this, Patreon added it relatively recently, the idea that you could follow for free and have it tag that way. And I have to wonder if this also starts to get people out of social media. Because one of the issues that I always hear with authors who run groups comes back to the algorithm where the Facebook algorithm loves to suppress things. And, you know, I'll see it by a notification yeah. because like, you've missed 10 things in the group. I'm like, how did I miss 10 things in the group? And so then I have to go over there and read them instead of just seeing them come up in my feed. And especially with Ream, since the emails can go out, I know when my favorite author does something because the email kicks out and then I know it. Yeah, I think we're broadly shifting. And what we've seen and I think all felt is, you know, this word attention economy. I'm, I'm sure that's a word that a lot of us have heard before, but it's basically that our attention is the new capital that everyone's fighting for and being monetized. And this is what we literally see. Like when you talk about social media, you know, current social media platforms are built off this attention economy model. And what ends up happening, and we all know this feeling, is you open up, I'll use Facebook as an example. You open up Facebook and you might want to check in with friends. You might want to check in with that reader group that you're super interested in. You might want to see updates from your favorite authors and also other things too. I mean, we all do other things besides just reading, although reading might be our biggest hobby. You might be using Facebook for other things. But regardless, you have these intentions that you want when you go to Facebook. But Facebook's goal isn't to serve your intention. It's to grab your attention. And what that often then leads to is, oh, you got this. I'm. This is obviously so stereotypical as an example, but there's a cute cat video and I got dragged into it. And now you're in this endless scroll of like reels, right? And, you know, you looked up, 20 minutes go by, and you're like, well, first of all, what did I just do? Second of all, that was like my free time. I could have been talking to friends, family, I could have been reading a good book, and I went there, right? That's not fun. And obviously, like, the best feeling is when you're sucked into a story, and like, it consumes every moment, and you don't even open up Facebook. But we've all felt that feeling where like, we really want to get into a new story, or we want to do something else, and it feels like Facebook sucking us in. But I think where we're seeing this shift broadly towards what I'll call the intention economy instead of attention is how do we help someone how do we help a reader when they you know enter into a digital environment not grab their attention but instead give them what they want in that moment and following when you choose to follow an author on ream you've marked your intention your intention is i want to hear more from this person i want to read their stories i want to get updates on their work and then because now we know your intention we'll give you just that and that's where it is like a, just a different total mindset shift in like how a social platform can be built. And that's also where like we go back to storytellers for the world. Like our goal is to support you as the author and your intention is actually very shared as a reader, right? And the reader's intention, right? Is to experience great stories. Okay, great. And the author's intention is to give readers great stories. That's what most authors want to do. And that's that shared intention when we can really harness that it's a like a just a seismic shift in how you know other platforms operate and i think that like you know in many ways it's like more of that interaction is already happening for a lot of authors on ream and a lot of authors are moving their social medias to ream and a lot of our future updates will be on making that experience better for readers and authors so that you know, one day my, my vision for ream is that you know reader opens up ream and this is like their reading world all their authors are here. All the updates they want in their books are here. This is their place to experience stories and know that like this is a safe place for you. You're not going to be dragged out into a million ads. You're not going to see all this like stories are political in nature, but you're not going to see all these political ads, right? You're not going to be dragged away into some, you know, wild corner of the internet that you don't want to be in. Like you're in your world for the stories that you enjoy. And for so many folks listening, I know that happens to be, you know, LGBTQ fiction, it happens to be romance stories, all these amazing things that oftentimes too, as you mentioned, how do I put it lightly? Like 
Facebook, I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not getting accusations here, but like Facebook, literally, like its algorithm literally does deprioritize certain types of content, and a lot of it happens to overlap with the types of words and things that are mentioned by readers and authors that write LGBTQ fiction, that write MM romance, and it, it's problematic. But Facebook, because they're a huge platform focused on serving everyone, I get it. They have these algorithms that have to filter and censor more things. But when you build a world designed around intention. You can give yourself and others what you want. And I and that makes it a little bit more of an open ecosystem, but not open in a vitriolic way, but open in a safe way because you're choosing where and how you want to interact. Just like, let me click the follow button. I want to follow these authors. I know it seems simple, like you just get to follow authors for free and that gives you stories and access to other things. But it's definitely a big change in how we think about things because you know, when you follow an author on a retailer like Amazon, you get an update when they release a new book. Okay. They don't even newsflash to readers. Authors don't control those emails when they go out. Authors have no idea when they go out. And most of the time they don't come out on the day that the book is released. That's another odd thing that you might have noticed actually getting these emails. But, you know, on a place like Ream, authors get to control that. They get to say, oh, this is when I'm going to update my readers. And they can share different types of updates with you as a reader. It's not just new book I'm going to sell you, but like, hey, like, here's some behind the scenes content. Here's this awesome update. I want your opinion or feedback on my next book. And that kind of, again, VIP experience is just really not possible other places. And that's what makes, you know, a place like Ream really special. That's what makes the whole concept of membership really special. And that's why we're really excited about something like following that allows anyone to be a member. Ream has the social reader, which is to me one of the most fascinating things that's inside the platform. And I think it's analogous to the idea that you can note stuff if you're reading on a Kindle and that other people can see that when they're reading, but you got to know how to do it. And a little bit like Goodreads, where you can leave a bunch of notes inside of a book's page. But this puts it all right there, like on the screen. Everybody can see it. It's there for that social kind of interaction. What led to that? Because I think it's a really fascinating thing to almost create community reading and sort of a community book club that you just have there because everybody's getting to leave a comment. I think that community book club is a great like three words to sum it up. And I think that's that it, that is the goal is to be able to create those environments. And it honestly came from, you know, Amelia Rose, she's written a lot on serial fiction platforms and a lot of Ream like is a great place to read serials. So if you're in, you can read novels on Ream, but Ream's also a great place to read serials if you're into serial fiction. And a lot of those platforms were more interactive, not quite at the level of Ream, but more interactive. And then, you know, when I started publishing on YouTube, after like writing all these books and seeing like how little interaction there was there, it was so much fun to be able to get comments on every YouTube video and be able to know I can like create something and get that feedback like very quickly. And then to know that like I could interact with my viewers and be able to like actually like create better videos because of that, because I know how they're thinking, I know what they're feeling and responding to. And, you know, furthermore, then when this got taken to my experience live streaming, when I was live streaming, it was super interactive where not only could people comment in real time and I could respond to them, people were also coming up on stage with me. So the show wasn't really about me live streaming. It was about us together as a community. And it just got me thinking how much fun, you know, being online is when you get to actually experience it in multiplayer. And we wanted to bring that experience to reading because it just felt like, you know, you can get the vibe that like we wanted to create a social platform for reading. That's what we want to do because we want to be able to bring communities together. We want to be able to help break down the barriers that exist between readers and authors, both financially and both from a from an interaction, from a social standpoint. And, you know, designing that social eater does exactly that. And it also helps us in a longer term goal that we have, which is that, you know, we really believe that readers are, and their opinions, their voices, all of you who are reading stories, you're what's really driving the publishing industry. Like story tells the world, but it's readers first. That's one of our mottos, right? It's one of our foundational principles. 
And what does it look like if we put readers first? One, we have to know what you all think, what your experience is like. And authors get to do that very easily on Ream. But also even further more than that, with this whole concept of book clubs, with this whole concept of readers being able to comment the side of stories, you know, it's not that farcical. In fact, it's going to happen. There's going to be readers who are trusted because of the comments they make inside stories. We enjoy those comments. We want more of them. And all of a sudden, we want to see, like, what story is this reader reading next that we enjoy their takes on stories, that we enjoy reading with them? And, you know, one of the long-term goals of Ream is not to be the next Amazon or the next big retailer because that's lame. It's to empower you know, a thousand independent bookstores to exist online. You know, what does an independent bookstore look like online? What does an independent book club look like online? I think, you know, what you're seeing now is the beginnings of that. We'll be able to create the future of it together. And that's both the short term and long term behind why we chose to do that. And it's something that, I mean, we just think is super fun. And that's, I mean, that's always what matters at the end of the day is creating something that could be fun for all of us. One of the other things that I think helps set Reem apart in the subscription space is much like Smashwords set itself apart for being a place where people could write more steamy, more taboo kind of content. Ream also allows authors to essentially write whatever kind of fiction they're writing without some of the restrictions you find on like a Patreon or, or another platform. Was that always part of the foundation ideas as well? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that was one of the big problems that Amelia faced on other platforms is that they weren't designed for fiction, both from a experience standpoint. You can't actually go and read books on Patreon. You have to go between the different posts. It's, it's very clunky, but also from how they handled moderation. When you have a platform that's trying to moderate all different forms of content and is not just focused on reading, you, you have that issue. But then another issue is that Frankly, you know, these big platforms don't often really care about niche kinis. They actually want to get away from it to be, a, they want to be a mass platform. They don't want to be branded as having steamy content as being a, you know, quote unquote adult platform. And Reams, none of those things, Reams are a reading platform. But Reem also recognizes that there's amazing stories and readers who love consuming content that, you know, is steamy, that does include like things that might be taboo at times. And that, on these other platforms that again are focused on reaching mass markets that are have these moderation issues, but also like don't want to cater to these audiences, which is sad, but it's true. We can feel that sense of readers. If you tell your family I'm into these kinds of stories, they might look at you and be like, Really? And we wanted to create a place that doesn't feel like we're looking at you like really, but like, no, this is awesome. Like the platform's called Reem, for God's sake, right? So I mean, th that's what we wanted to do. And you know, because Amelia has faced this beyond firsthand, you know, the kinds of books I, I read and wrote were a little bit more like socially acceptable. And that's only because like, that's what I was interested in being, you know, a straight white guy, you have a certain privilege to in society. But, you know, when what you read or write isn't quote unquote normal, which doesn't mean it's not normal. It just means some probably white guys think it's not normal. You know, that doesn't make it any less awesome. But in certain places, they care about you less. But on Ream, because we're bootstrapped, because we're made by authors for authors, this is who we care about. Because let's be real. I mean, most authors, we're all weird writing in our own corners, doing our own things and re reading. Like I, I didn't grow up. I was never the popular kid. I've never had a ton of friends. We're all like, we're all the ones who are quote unquote, not normal. And that's like what makes reading special. And I, we, you need a place for all of us to come together for us to really be able to do what we need to do and to be able to get each other. And I think that, you know, as silly as it sounds like, like, you know, Ream's just a piece of software. I'm not trying to make it Ream sound like some living, breathing being that's staring at you while you're reading. That's really creepy. But the people who created Ream, me, Amelia, and Sean, who is our lead developer, we get you. And we're building Ream to hopefully give you that experience, give your authors that experience. Because, you know, we've faced for so long what it's like being places that don't get us. And that's a lonely feeling if there's ever a lonely feeling. You collect a lot of data behind the scenes with Ream because you're looking not only at Ream, but you look at the other platforms too and what's going on there. In your experience, what do you see that are like the most popular things that readers like to get in their subscriptions? That's a good question. You know, 
Yeah, it's interesting because like that's like the number one question authors ask. And readers are like readers just tell us, which because readers know what the readers generally know what they're interested in, right? So what what I'll frame it as this, like generally, you know, readers when they really enjoy a series from an author, want to try and get that series, the next book in that series faster. And you could think about it like the Hollywood screening, where you know, you go in and you get that red carpet access to the movie before anyone else does. That tends to be pretty popular for people. You know, what also is pretty popular is getting like, whether it's bonus content behind the scenes, maybe there's two characters in specific that their romance wasn't fully explored inside of the book, but you want to see more of that, right? Maybe the author wrote a secondary novella that goes along with it. That is also quite popular, like getting more immersed into the world. And then, you know, particularly actually with a lot of authors who are writing LGBTQ romance who are writing MM romance. I know for me as a reader, I identify very strongly with the stories I enjoy. It becomes kind of part of who I am. And a lot of us want to rep that, want to like literally wear that. So merch becomes pretty popular, other types of swag, because it's amazing to feel like you're a part of this world that you love. And actually having that world be in your world on your shirt, you know, or whether it's maybe a hat or other types of things like that are, are quite popular. So those are the big things we see, but, you know, at an individual reader level for everyone listening, you know, whatever interests you in a subscription and being a part of a membership, you know, it's going to vary actually depending on the author. You know, you might have one author that you're like, I don't really care if I actually get their books early, but I really need to know what happened to these two characters. And I would love to get this bonus scene, right? You might have another author that, you're like, I need their books right now. You might have another author that you want to binge their whole backlist and they have their backlist description. Another author that you're like, are they coming out with merch related to like this world or this character? Because like I would kill for that merch. And then you might have other authors that you're like, I'm actually not here for any of that. Like, oh, that's cool. But I'm not here for that. I'm here because I really want to support this author. And because, you know, they got me through a tough time in my life with this story. And, you know, I know that, you know, an extra five bucks a month, an extra, whatever it is, will help them out. And it feels really good to give to someone that you care about. And that's your way of showing that care. It doesn't have to be the only way you show that care. That way you show that care might be commenting on their stories positively. And it might be sharing with other readers. There's a lot of other ways that you can show authors you care. But yeah, I think that's what it typically goes back to. And as we look into 2024, this episode drops in the middle of January. What kind of cool things, I mean, you've got the social reader. What can you tease readers who are using the Ream platform about things that are going to start to enhance their intake of stories even more? Yeah. So I think the biggest one that really should be live when this goes live is, is discovery on Ream. And there's a real, some really big things that we've done with it to make it a way better experience for readers. Honestly, I did not think we were going to go this far. With it, but it's basically a full relaunch. The platform is how big this update is. It's by far nothing even comes close our biggest update yet, and will probably be our biggest update for. I mean, we have other big updates planned, but this one's really big. So, what does it look like? Well, when you're a reader on Read, you'll be able to access top lists, and you'll be able to access rising reamers, which are authors who are up and coming on the platform and stories up and coming on the platform, and you'll also be able to search for stories. And when you do that. How we've designed that system it's intuitive and you'll and you can see the covers you can get into the stories that way start reading immediately because a lot of authors set their first few chapters public so you can just get in and start reading the book that's fun that's awesome but how we actually let you discover stories is much more detailed than native pop so we have a huge system of subgenres that ariel bailey one of our team members at ream built out and she's super into the fandoms super, super into, you know, genre really. And it's a system of like, I think 300 or so genres and subgenres that are built out. But in addition to that, there's also a romance pairing system where let's say you want to experience a story that's MM. You can do that and filter all the different top lists that exist in Ream. Like if you want like a romantic suspense story, you could then filter and see the top stories or the rising reamers by that. 
right? So you can filter by romance pairing. In addition, you can filter by diversity. So we have a whole section of diversity filters that you can click. It's just super like one click. Oh, now I can sort top stories by BIPOC. I could sort top stories by LGBTQIA+. You could start top stories by um, sensory impaired. We have all these different categories and they're not too overwhelming. They're actually very, we narrowed them down to be encompassing and easy to use, but really cool. So you can actually create like your own custom bestseller lists and rising reamers lists automatically. And you can do the same thing when you're searching for stories too. This, it works the same way. So that if you want like a very specific, I'm looking for, you know, maybe there's this specific trope you want in this specific setting. And then this specific job genre, you would type in the trope, you type in that, which author, you know, that's tagged separately. But then you could drop down and say, well, what does it look like if that trope's MM? What does it look like if that trope only has, you know, BIPOC characters? What does it look like, et cetera? And you could just go and do that. So going back to like intention, we wanted to try and like give readers like a really granular ability to be able to share like, what is their intention? What stories are they looking for right now? And if not, if you're like, I'm just here, what we'll do, which is great, is on the homepage, it's a trending stories at the bottom that all of that's basically going to be an endless scroll of stories that we think you're interested in based off of the other things that you're searching for on the platform. So if you're just like, I want to check out new things. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to think we all are in that moment. We just want to see new stories. We'll show you new stories too. And those will hopefully be based off of stories that we know that you'll probably enjoy. And it's just an effortless scroll that makes it very easy to see new titles from new authors and test out new things that you might enjoy. So yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. But outside of that, I'm really excited in 2024 for us to launch the ability for authors to bring their Facebook groups to read. That's one of our big launches. It's going to come towards the end of the year. And it's going to be all about helping readers post inside of author CUNYs, readers be moderators in author CUNYs, and really have the ability to like build your own reader CUNYs on read where you're able to take the lead, not just authors, but you're able to take the lead too. You're able to start the conversation. That we're really, really excited for. We're also, for the listeners specifically, going to be releasing audiobooks on the platform as well. And I think it'll be a very good experience, audio on the platform. And I'm very excited for that too. So yeah, those are, I guess, three of our big releases. That's awesome. As both an author and a reader, I look forward to all of that. <laughs> now we've got authors and aspiring authors who are also in the audience. And you've got great resources for them if they're interested in learning more about subscriptions, maybe thinking to start their own. Tell us a little bit about what you've got for you know that segment of our audience. So for authors, we have like an overwhelming amount of things. The best <laughs> place to go is subscriptionsforauthors.com or to the Subscriptions for Authors Facebook group. And if you sign up for our mailing list, there's like a pretty in-depth welcome sequence where we'll send you all the free things that we have to help you. Like we have a podcast called Scriptions for Authors. We have fireside chats that we do, monthly basically webinars that are on YouTube about different areas of subscription. We have an author personas test where you get to see what is the best way for you to start and lead a community of readers and start your subscription as an author. We have, you know, an award show that we did last week and then you were out, which was a lot of fun. We do now fun things like our blog where I'll write like essays on publishing, but basically all of it is at subscriptionsforauthors.com. And it's really a choose your own adventure. I think you could literally spend over 150 hours consuming what we have there. It's like, it's a vast library of resources, but that's where I would start. Oh, we also have a free book too. That's all about subscriptions. You can find it on any retailer called Subscriptions for Authors. You could also find it on YouTube or Spotify that you can listen to the audiobook for free. And that's a good primer if you're interested in getting started. But we have like a whole world. We have like our own little mini Disney for folks who are <laughs> interested in learning more. Yeah. Besides your subscriptions for authors book, I'll also shout out your book on the creator economy too. Because I found those two, I read them back to back and they were really helpful as I was thinking about my journey to start a subscription. So people should check that out too. Oh, I'm grateful you liked it. I'm working on a new book now. Well, I'm working on two, two. I'm working on a collection of the essays that I wrote, which won't be too, you know, that'll be more like putting it all together in one place and some essays I haven't released before. But then I'm also going to be releasing a book next year called The Sovereign Author, which will all be about like the new mindset for authors to succeed in this new generation of publishing. So I'm very excited for The Sovereign Author. I think it'll, it'll dive deep into mental health, which I think will be 
pretty fun. One of our patrons, Katie, has a question that also leans a bit towards the business side of things. They were curious about trad published authors and subscriptions and kind of what goes into what they can offer since they're also bound to a publisher who might control more of the rights to the story than like an indie author might have. It's a very good question. You know, from our conversation with trad authors, you know, they usually can't offer early access to their stories. Why is because the publisher, typically they've signed a deal that the publisher has, you know, rights to that series and future books and series. So that publisher probably doesn't want that released ahead of time. Sometimes authors can get special permission, but usually that's not allowed. Bonus content's tricky. It's tricky. Usually special permission has to be garnered there. It's sometimes easier to get special permission for bonus content than it is for the actual main story itself. But what we mostly see authors doing is having, you know, whether it's short stories unconnected to their main series, so they're writing something a little bit separate, doing behind the scenes tests. They might be doing art, things that are like not directly the IP that they're working with their publisher on. Typically, the writing and work that their actual publisher is publishing for them is not going to be able to be involved in their subscription in a substantive way. Now, we can't let anybody go without getting recommendations. So curious, I mean, as we're talking, you've basically just finished finals, so it's hard to say what you're going to recommend here. But what have you been reading or watching recently that our listeners might want to check out? A great question. So one, I really enjoy, but it's like an old show, but I just finished it recently called Nashville. I That's love a classic. That <laughs> yeah, I love that show. So I'm a big fan of that show. In terms of reading, you know, I read probably different than most of the audience here. But this is an interesting book that does intersect with the topics I talked about today. So there, there is a chance that someone is interested in checking this out. So basically, the actual author of this book was one of the first employees at Instagram. So he helped build Instagram. And the story is called, Please Report Your Bug Here. Fascinating story. I really liked it. And then another book, this one's nonfiction. That I think y'all would like. And again, it's in typical me fashion, a little bit related to technology, but I think it's really interesting. It's called uh, Race After Technology by Ruha Benjamin. And, you know, early we were talking in our conversation about, you know, who is our digital world built for and different environments that might not be built for specific audiences and the limitations of that. Race After Technology is all about that. And honestly... I mean, it's somewhat depressing, it's somewhat mind-blowing, but it's really, it's like one of those things that I think you need to read. I wish everyone read that book because it's really important to get an understanding of that. And I think that like for so many folks here who are in the queer community, who are also reading and writing similar things, you're going to be, you're going to relate heavily to race after technology, because as we know, you know, similar themes extend in, in the queer community. And it's a, like I said, mind blowing book. So those would be my recs. I'll have to check that out. Uh, you would love the book. You would love it. Yeah. So yeah, I'll be picking that up shortly after we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael, what's the best way for people to keep up with both you individually and the things that you might be doing even outside of Ream and then also, you know, with Ream itself? Yeah. Well, to keep up with Ream itself, I mean, the best place is reamstories.com. You can create like a free account there and uh, we'll keep you updated on things that happen on the platform. And you can also go check it out. So reamstories.com is the best place to go. And if you want to learn more about me, I'm most of my time really is spent on Ream at this very moment. And I don't see that changing anytime soon, but you can learn a little bit more about me at my website. It's just M Evans. So M then E-V-A-N-S then inked I-N-K-E-D. Dot com. So you can go to either of those places. But I recommend you check out Reem. That'll probably be more interesting to everyone here. But if you do want to learn a little bit more about me, that's where you could go. Awesome. Michael, thank you so much for coming to talk to us about subscriptions. We look forward to hopefully even more readers coming to whatever platform to support authors and read more stories in the coming year. Yes, we always love readers and 
readers keep everything alive for us authors and us authors are readers too. So we're right with you. This episode's transcript has been brought to you by our community on Patreon. If you'd like to read the conversation for yourself, head on over to the show notes page for this episode at BigGateFictionPodcast.com. You've got links to everything that we've talked about in this episode. Thanks so much to Michael for spending some time to talk to us about subscriptions and Ream. It's really incredible watching how Ream has debuted in the past year and how they are out there to help authors and readers connect with each other. All right, I think that'll do it for now. Coming up next on Monday, January 29th, we're going to be continuing our discussion with three authors who are running their own successful subscriptions. We're going to be joined by Charlie Cochet, Nora Phoenix, and Victoria Sue. And we're going to talk about why they started a subscription, what they're providing, and what they're hearing from readers in their communities. On behalf of Jeff and myself, we want to thank you so much for listening. And we hope that you'll join us again soon for more discussions about the kinds of stories we all love. The big gay fiction kind. Until then, keep turning those pages and keep reading. The Big Gay Fiction Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more shows you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Original theme music by Daryl Banner.